Hello everyone, welcome back again. In today's tutorial, we're we'll learning about for loops in Julia. So for loops are usually used for when you are doing iterations. You, are iter you have a set of numbers or a group of data, and you want to iterate each and every of these data. So it is very useful. But first of all, to do a for loop, you have to understand certain con concepts. You have to first of all understand range. A range is a set of numbers. For example, like from one. So I want to find the range of numbers from 1 to 10. So this is a range. So in Julia, remember that Julia starts from that from 1 instead of 0, unlike other programming languages. So this is a range, and this is how a range is done. So when you get something like this, this is how a range looks like. So if you want to bring out all the numbers inside this to iterate all the numbers, one of the ways is to use collect. So collect is going to grab all the numbers inside this range. And then bring it or put it into a form of an array. So, for example, if I do like this same thing, so to do a collect, you can just put this range, this value that's given here, into this bracket. So that's going to be one. So it's going to be it's going to make or grab all the numbers, collect all the numbers, and make it into an array. So this is how it is. So you can just go straight away with like collect and then this is ten. Mm, ten, right? So this is going to be straight away. For us is just made it into an array so so now if you want to iterate using the for loop it can be for say for i this i can be anything it can be j it can be k it can be this it can be a lot of things so it can be let's make it like i in the range that we created already like one is to ten this range so and then we go with print line the print line is going to bring it in lines it's also a, a format of outputting your data so and then end it's going to bring all of the values from 1 to 10 for us so this is one of the ways you can do it so apart from that you, this same format can be done like this remember that this is how it was you can also do it like and this range gave us this format right so we can still do an I can still do a range like for i in the 1 is to 10 which was given to us in the previous area then you come to i print line say i and then end so it's going to still print it for us so there are two formats you can do it you can either do it like this this format or you can do it like this format also another way you can also do it is you can also do it like this so for i and clear it for i in instead of in you can just go with equal to then one is to ten then you go with print line say i and then end so it's going to still print it for us that means that there are three different methods you can use this range format to do iteration to iterate over our range so now having finished with this let's see what you can also do with the for you can also do iterations of the, or even can also do for loops with strings so for example you have a string like for i in say a string called hello julia language right if i want to iterate through all of them i can say print line then i and then end so it's going to move throughout all of them and bring each and every of them for us so you can do it in a string also you can also do iterations in a tuple so a tuple is usually a set of numbers which are usually in motor work that you can change them so for i in which is just like in another program so two so for example a tuple is just equal to like this tuple then let's say put it into, into a bracket like this so one two and let's make it a, a tuple of odd numbers four five six mm -hmm. this is my odd number seven and then nine right so this is a tuple so if i'm going to check type of and i go with tuple it will tell me that it's a tuple of these integers these integers okay so if you want to actually iterate you can just go straight away for i in tuple and then current bracket i and then n so we see that it's printed it together because it's not the difference between a print and then a print line. If I had done it like print line, it's going to bring all of them separately. 
you see that has brought them a line between them so that's the difference between the print normal print to normal print line so this is some of the way you can also do it you can also do four loops for an array so let's say array in julia is equal to usually arrays are put into square bracket so for example i have an array of odd of even numbers and then of right so if i'm supposed to check it it has already told me that it's an array of integers so if i check type of array it tell me that it's an array it's a one type array you can also do the same thing and then in, if you do it like this format you can make maybe two different array, arrays you can make it like let's say one two three four five so going to convert it into a, a tuple for you so it's going to convert this one into a tuple format so that when, you, when I go to check type of and then go array don't tell me that it's a tuple of an array of an array so this is quite interesting so you can you can look through it so for i in this array array in julia this which is a tuple print line i and then in so give us a mistake because this is not defined that's the reason why it was a mistake so it's not an error it's undefined error so i'm supposed to name this as array in julia that's going to work perfectly for us so this is how it is now so which is quite interesting so another one last thing before we move on is that in julia you can also iterate between two different values for example if i have a value like a which as we have been using uh, we have order of just numbers up to five right i have another which is numbers up from six to seven so, uh, to ten right and i want to iterate throughout all of them together so i can just use this format for i in zip zip means you are zipping the two of the numbers together then a and then b right and we come back to print line i and then end so that's going to bring it's going to take a number from the first value to take numbers from the first value like one and then six two and seven eight and nine so this is quite useful especially when you're doing bias and six work and then you have a lot of data you have to calculate a uh, s the s coordinate and the y coordinate you can actually use these ones it will help you very well when you are calculating so thank you for watching and i hope this was quite a long one but i hope you have learned something and thanks again for watching if you have any question or comment or dislike you can put a comment or the question in the comment section and then please don't forget to subscribe thank you and stay blessed